Did you know that you can easily retrieve remote data from an external API and display it in any page builder of your choice using dynamic shortcodes? Let me show you some examples. The first set of examples are done within the Elementor page builder. And the first example, we have the random quotes generator that pulls in random quotes into the block quote widget. Then we have the image of a cute dog, which is a cute husky that is pulled into the image widget. Finally, we have the gallery of images from Pixabay, which is a popular website for getting free images. So that is it for Elementor. Then for Bricks, we have a remote API for the popular anime Naruto. So you see, we can get Naruto, or if I decide I want to get someone else, or say maybe a new character, and it pulls in the image of the character, the title, when the character debuted in the, in the manga, and the sex and other things from the remote API. That is for breaks. Then we also can use it in breakdance. So I'm still pulling from the same dogs API and I'm pulling in cute chihuahuas and just a gallery of chihuahuas. So this shows that you can use it in breakdance. You can use it within bricks. You can also use it within Elementor or in the Gutenberg editor. Or if you are using Oxygen, you can use it in Oxygen as well. So any page builder you have, you can use the same remote API and it will work. So these are some of the examples. We also see some other examples, which is even more complicated one. This is having a form. And then when I search for an image, it should pull in the data for that image. This is using Elementor. So let me see, I'm looking for something like the, the new movie now, maybe Deadpool, or let me just search for minions. So say minions submit. And we get all of the details for Minions. So we have the title, the date it was released, the cover image. We have so many information. This is in Elementor. The same thing you can do with Bricks. So let's see. With Bricks, I can search for anything. So let me search for the popular one, Deadpool. And Wolverine. So search. See, it gives me details for Deadpool and Wolverine. Tells me the date it was published, which was 2024. I just recently watched the movie, the cover image and some description. So you can get all of these details. And the cool part about it is that each of these is a separate widget. So I'm using in Bricks. So this is an image widget. This is the heading widget, the text. And so everything is a separate widget. Previously with Elementor, you actually had the ability to pull in remote data from an external API, but it was limited to a single widget, which was the remote content widget, which I'll show you here. I got it to work with this. This is using the remote content widget. Let's go ahead and edit it with Elementor. As you can see, this one in Elementor is just a single widget, the remote content widget, and I had to write the entire HTML myself. So if you see on that data, you basically have to write the entire HTML yourself. So that is the limitation here. It was only limited to Elementor 1, and you had to write the entire HTML yourself. But now, using dynamic shortcodes, you can use separate widgets. So let me go ahead and open this one. I'll go ahead and edit it with Elementor. And as you can see, so I'm just showing it. This is the entire data that's being pulled from the external API. Then this is the search form, which is just a basic Elementor form. Then this is where everything is. So these are all separate widgets. We have heading widgets. We have the image widgets. We have the icon list widgets. We have the rating widgets and so on. So, so these are separate widgets, whereas before everything had to be stuck within a single widget. So now let's go ahead and see how we can do a simple one. So I'll be doing it. Maybe let me do it in Elementor. That's easier. 
then I might just show it in bricks as well. So all you have to do is I will leave a link in the description to the documents that you need. The main documents you need are the API documentation so you can understand how to use it. It works with GET, it works with POST. So it's not only GET API, you can also use POST. So this is for a simple GET request. All you have to do is say, open the curly brace, API, colon, then put the entire link and then close the curly brace. That's it. If you want to get the request with headers, you can add in key arguments for the headers. If you want to use the post request, you can use the post and so on and so forth. You can just go ahead and read this. This is how you can use the API. Then the other one that we might use as well is the build URL. This helps you to add those query parameters because sometimes the URL will contain some query parameters for your API key and maybe the title and things like that. So you cannot use this build URL to create the URL. So first you start with build-url, then you put the base URL. So maybe like devden.co.uk slash API or something like that. Then for each of the parameters, that's whichever one starts with the question mark, all of those parameters, you now say the key equal to the value, key equal to value and so on and so forth to something like API key equal to this, title equal to that. And depending on how the API says you should write it out. So this is how you can create a complex URL. And the advantage of using this build URL is that you can now start adding in dynamic data. So everything can be dynamic data. The base URL can be dynamic data. The key, the value, they all can be dynamic data. So that is the benefit of using this build URL to create your long string of URLs. But then you can also use this parameter. This is what I'm using for the forms because each of the forms is basically just adding in some query parameters into the URL. And that is what is now pulling in the title. So the title there you see, Deadpool, then space Wolverine. That is now what is being pulled into the API and it's now bringing in the results. So that's the documentation for how you can use the get parameter. So the last one is the PowerShot code because an API is pulling in data from a remote source. So you want it to be secured. So only the administrator can initiate that process. So the administrator will create a PowerShot code for the API. Then you now allow the user to be able to use that PowerShot code. That's why it's giving you this, the writing of the PowerShot codes is only done by administrator for security reasons. And then once the administrator has created it, he can now give the contributors or the editor the ability to use that PowerShot code. So those are the things that we need. So now let's go ahead and see how we can build a typical API. So let me go ahead and search for one. So I'll search for, let me, I think the dog API, dog API. Basically, this is all you need to do. Say HTTPS dog.co slash API slash the breed hound. So in this case is hound. If you want, a chihuahua, if you want a poodle, you want any breed, you just give the breed name. There's a list here. Then you say images, then it will just show you all of the images. If you want something smaller, so which we're going to do now, basically you want just a single dog. So just the images slash random and to just fetch a random single random dog. So that's the, what I'm going to copy. So I'll copy this entire URL. I said I was going to use it in Elementor. So let me go to Elementor. Let me go to the back end. Then I'll go under dynamic shortcodes. You have to make sure that for your page builder, it is activated. So if you go under settings, because I'm using the Elementor, I have to make sure that Elementor is active. If I'm using it in breakdance, I have to make sure breakdance is active. Oxygen, oxygen is active. The breaks or uh, whichever one you're using, make sure that that one is active. Then 
Next thing we need to do is go to our PowerShot codes. So under PowerShot codes, these are a list of different short codes I have created. So let me now create a new one. I'll now call this one maybe dog API two, just to differentiate it from the other one I created. Then, like I showed from the documentation of APIs, which is here, see this is how the API should look. So API column, the URL, and then if there's any arguments, then you can add those arguments in there, but there's no arguments in this case. So all I just do is open and close the curly brace. Then let me zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. Then I write API colon because it's going to be a string, so I'll put it in a string format and then paste the URL. So that's HTTPS, the URL, and that's it. So let me save this. So it's saved. Then I'll copy this power dog dash API two. For this example, let me even use it within the Gutenberg editor so that you can see it working in action. So I'll go to posts, then the hello world post. And in this post, I'll just drop in that PowerShot code. The limitation is that you may not see it in the builder, but when you go to the front end, you see it. So let me save it, go into the front end. And okay, we're getting an array. So let's go ahead and see what that array is. What I'll do is I'll put in the at, because it's a PowerShot code, I want to be able to add in some key argument to the PowerShot code. I'll say value, then the exclamation mark, and then I'll put the pipe symbol and write dump. All of this is explained within the PowerShot code. You can go ahead and check the documentation. So I'll save this. Then let me go back to the front end and then refresh and see. So it's giving me an array and all that array is having is the message. So I have to just get into the array using the double pipe symbol. So that I'm accessing the array and I'm just looking for the message. So once I do that, access the message within the array, it will give me the value of the image URL. So let me just copy this message, come back. So rather than this dump, I'll now do the double pipe symbol and then paste the message. Let me remove the spaces if there's any problem. Okay, so this is the short code we need. Let me copy this. Then I'll put it in an image widget. So image, insert from URL. Then I'll just paste that short code. Click apply. Unfortunately, it will not show in the editor. Save. Then go to the front end and then refresh. And we get our random image. If I refresh the page again, we get another random image of a dog. And see, that's how the API works. That's how simple it is to use API within any page builder. Basically, you just have to first use a dump or you can use dump ERR. Let me show you an example. If you come to bricks, then let me go over to the edit with bricks. You may not see it appearing in the editor as well, but sometimes it appears. Sometimes it may not appear in this way. You just, once you look at it on the front end, you'll be able to see it that it's working. So what I need to do is in this case, let me remove something so I can see how the thing looks like. So let me get this URL. Sign the code. Save it. So because I want to use the PowerShot code multiple times. So what I did is I first created the API in the PowerShot code. Then I used a variable using the sets so I set that PowerShot code so I don't have to be calling the API multiple times. So I just call the API once, set it into a variable. The variable name was called movie. Then I can now start accessing that variable and getting all the data that I want. So that's the trick I'm using here. And you have to make sure that you're going to set it into a variable. 
it has to be the first element on the page. So that's why I'm using the code element because I noticed that if you try to use the heading widget, it doesn't actually render as the first element and then some things happen. But if you use the code element or use a basic text element, then it will render at the top of the page. I'm using the code element because it's not actually something that should be visible on the page. So I get this set. Then I just set a variable name called movie. Then I set the power shot code into that variable. And now I'm just using the dump R. Let me show you what that dump R does. So basically just dumping into the error. So let me now search for a movie. So I'll search for like a minions. So now if you come under this error shortcode, it shows you how the actual array is being pulled in. So this is how the array looks like. So all you have to now do is do get movie double pipe symbol to access the array and then you say title. Get movie double pipe symbol yeah it will give you the value and so on and so forth. So you can see this is how the entire JSON file is being pulled in. They were now accessing that JSON file and doing whatever manipulation we want to do with it. So if it's an array within an array, you have to do the double pipe symbol, access the first array, do the pop double pipe symbol again and access the second array. So for something like this, for example, this is an array within an array. So you would say ratings. So you start with get movie double pipe ratings, then double pipe again. To access the array, you say zero, and then, or you can do a for loop if you want to create a loop like a gallery of images. You can use the for loop. Just only want to access one item, then you can just use the double pipe symbol to access the array. So yeah, that's it. But this is for when you want it to be more complicated. If you just a simple one like a weather widget or something like the image of a dog, then. You don't have to complicate matters. You just do the power shot code for the API, which is under the power shot codes. Let me go ahead and show you. So these are the different power shot codes that I'm using. So dynamic shot codes, power shot codes. So I have, this is the one for the movie. So I'm using API build URL because it has different query parameters. So it has API key, the type is movie. So that's why I use the build URL. Then the one for the dog is just a single API. Then for your pixel bay, it's the same thing. I'm also putting in the key as an options from ACPT. So that's why I'm using the option from ACPT as the key because I didn't want to show the key in public. Then for the quotes API is quotes and so on and so forth. Basically, you do API, then the string. If you don't want to write the string at one go, you can now use the build URL to create the string, which is now being put in to the API shortcode. And then you can nest different shortcodes together to create one complex shortcode. So you can get maybe the API key in your ACF options page or your ACPT options page or Jet Engine options page or pods op options page, wherever. You can put the URL parameter. Let me show you how nice it is. So let me come back to the movie URL. So the movies API, as you can see, the actual title, I'm using the param get, which is getting the title from my search URL. Then the API key is from an options page. Then this is just the actual URL and I'm using the build shortcode within an API shortcode. So I'm nesting shortcodes within shortcodes, within shortcodes and everything works fine. That is one of the benefits of using dynamic shortcodes over some native options like the native bricks shortcode. It only allows you to add in one fallback and that fallback is a static fallback. But with dynamic shortcodes, you can add different kinds of shortcodes within each other. You nest shortcodes and you can come up with different APIs and if you want to see more about APIs, I think Brendan O'Connell, he showed some different cool APIs you can use using not WordPress, but he was showing different APIs. And I'm hoping that he will be able to take these dynamic shortcodes up and 
show you even more powerful things you can do with dynamic shortcodes and APIs. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.